What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome to another daily recap. Today is April 30th, 2020. What a crazy day it is, guys. UAVS, C-A-P-R, all these stocks, which were supposed to be low hangers, but they didn't work out that way. This is basically how small cap trading, low floats, pigs work, man. They, they are not obvious. When you think it's obvious, you're gonna fucking get your ass kicked. But at the end of the day, it's basically this, risk management. It's all about timing. We know these are pieces of crap, okay? They are turds, but does, does not mean it's an automatic short right away. And that's the problem with a lot of traders. They, they, they think they know too much because they read these filings. And if you read the filings, yeah, these companies are pieces of crap. And then when you read the PR, it's even worse. You know, the PR is meant to pump and you're like, dude, there's really no substance to these PRs. They're just buzzwords. You know, they put the word COVID-19 in there, coronavirus in there, whatever it may be. And, you know, people, people chase them. That's the nature. That's because these, these stocks are taking advantage of the hype in order to raise capital for these crappy companies, for the insiders to sell their shares, whatever it may be. This stock, UAVS, was two days ago, 89 cents. Any stock trading fucking 89 cents is not a real company, guys. It's like me. I can I could probably IPO <laughs> um, MIC right now, and it will be worth a lot more than this company probably. But, you know, this company is, you know, they, they, they're doing offerings. They do whatever they do, need to do. It doesn't matter what the reason may be. So let's go into right away, okay? Let's go into right away. So we always go through the same process every day, guys. So what happens is this. We have two types of plays that we like to talk about in MIC. One is called the low-hanging fruit. What the low-hanging fruit is, is the hot chick of the day play. We call it the hot chick. Basically, it's a hot play. It could be the hot dude of the day. It doesn't matter, right? We, it doesn't matter. Your sexual preference doesn't matter. The hot car of the day, whatever you want to call it, right? The hot food of the day. So what do we mean by hot chick of the day? What hot play of the day? It's basically a day one play that everyone's attracted to because it's on the scanner. So there's two sets of plays. One's our scanner plays, which is day ones usually. They're like you wake up and there's a PR and someone pumped it up and and let's find a day one play. A day one play would be this, SNGX. There's no volume and then boom, it, it pops up like this and it fades all day. It, sometimes it fades, sometimes it bounces, it doesn't matter, right? So yesterday, UAVS was the hot play of the day right here. And so this morning when I broke, woke up, so this is a two day chart and this is a intraday chart and these are pivot lines drawn in. And if you want pivot lines, we have videos on how to add that to your chart. This was the hot play of the day yesterday. And so this morning, so depending on how, if it gaps up or gaps down, it may or may not be a low hanging fruit. A true low hanging fruit is this. It would be something like CAP, CAPR. So we'll start with a true low hanging fruit play, okay? A true low hanging fruit play is the play that used to be the hot chick of the day, the very previous day, the very previous day, not two days ago, not three days ago, not a year ago, not a week ago, the very... Previous day, low hanging fruit. We call I call that the continuation breakdown play. It's continuing to break down. Okay, so it it became a hot check yesterday. Went to ten dollars APR. Then it started to fade the rest of the afternoon. So now it starts to fade and it sits at eight. And then when we woke up in the morning, it actually gapped down a little bit. So it gapped down by forty cents. It was like it closed at eight fifty. Actually, wow, it gapped even more. So I forgot. Okay, this is pre, uh, this is after hours. Okay, so it's even better. So these scenarios are actually makes it kind of like better because it deviated so far from the VWAP that every single bag, uh, every single long is now underwater. So it kind of helps us. And we're just hoping that it doesn't tank too much, guys. So it closed at 
850 yesterday, right here, 850 at four o'clock, right there, 1600 military time. And then it starts to fade down the rest of the day. And then we're, we're crying. We're like, oh my God, oh my God, please do not die. Please do not die because we want to short this. And this is a true low hanging fruit. It's a continuation breakdown. That's what a low hanging fruit is, okay? A continuation breakdown. And I'll explain to you why this was not a really low hanging fruit because it gapped up. It didn't break down, it kept on going up. But then the trap came. I'll talk about that later, okay? But this is a true low hanging fruit where it closed at 850, it's red. And so even at $8, even at $8, anybody that held this overnight is over red. So everyone's looking to get out. And so what makes it really nice also is because this is a day two and people forget about it. It's not a hot chick anymore. It's not the hot plane anymore. You have things like UAVS, you have things like SNGX and there could be more, okay? But I focus on only a few today to try to nail it. So what happened? Let me show you the best way to do it is to show you what I traded and how I traded it. So what I usually do is I draw the lines. And I use two days because this is the most frequent day. So what you can do is draw a line where it's at eight bucks and then, you know, you start drawing the lines. And so basically I want a magical $8 entry. It may or may not get there, but the problem is pre-market, it already started to tank. So here we go. Okay. It started to tank already. So tank, it popped up. Okay. So now it's forming a chart. So depending on what time you wake up. Okay. So when I got up around 7.30, it already started tanking. I'm like, oh crap. So let's take a look at this. See if you're... So here's the view up, the yellow line, and yeah, 8.30, see? I missed the tank down, but the tank down did a couple of things. Because even out here, I was kind of, you. I would be scared because it's a coin flip. It's sitting at VWAP. We don't know it's going to pop up to nine bucks or, you know, before it dropped down. Because yesterday, let's take a look at this. So this is at, this VWAP here is at $7.90. So, so it's hovering here. So it would have been a good starter, just a tiny starter. Because if, if it was sitting at $8, guys, there's a potential that it, it gets pushed to $8.50, okay? But the fact that it went underneath, now it gives me even better confidence to scale the bounce. So this was the move I'm looking for. If I had taken a short here, guys, it would have been anticipating. It would have been gambling. Because this could have pushed over to $8.50. What I do is this. There's a point of a line that I broke that I'm not going to add any more shares. Every time it drops, I'm going to. I'm going to cover. I'm going to keep covering. I'm not adding. So the key to taking a loss is not to add. You cover and you keep. So I ended up covering and covering even higher because it never fucking went down more than fucking seven cents on the stock. I had fucking orders every 10 cents to take the loss down, but it never tight. And sometimes you just have to eat the loss on the offer. So I had to take the loss on the offer on, the, on half of it and then started to wait so that the bids go down. Cause 10 cents on 20,000 shares is still a significant amount of fucking money. Um, so, but I had to eat half right away because I had too much size. And so when you were your worst enemy, when you're too much sized up. And so I ate the loss and I was like, fuck this shit. So I, so I do a trick. I take this symbol off of my main screen. I move to the furthest left corner. So I don't even fucking see it because if I see it, I might be tempted to get in at 340, four bucks. 450, I'd be raped again. I was content to taking my loss and, and I was beat up. I needed to clear my mind and I cleared my mind by going back to my process. I deviated from my process, oversized, be greedy, I oversized and I got nailed. For that amount of size, for this move, I, that was the best trade I did this week, guys. Okay, which enabled me to recover and I started fucking nailing it all the way back down. So and when the top hits, you know, I just, that's, that's it. We always talk about this. You wait, if you just wait for the top to be set and you scale the bounce, you know, it's the most high probability trade versus anticipating. So once again, I use the method because it's a low hanging fruit, but it's not really low hanging fruit breakdown because it's still above yesterday's close. That is the key, okay? It's, it, it tricked people by gapping really high and walking down, but there was hardly any volume. Look at this. There's hardly any volume. They did a fucking fantastic job of, of disguising this weakness, guys. Hardly any volume, okay? It was probably 600,000 shares of volume at that time for a stock that's currently trading at what? 170 million. <laughs> There's a very tiny, very tiny amount of shares that they use to do this. This is a straight up manipulation stock. Bravo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clap them. They trapped a lot of guys and made a lot of shorts go broke. And you know, thank, thank goodness that we didn't fucking knock on wood but so i always say, tell people man first they they kill their early shorts then annihilate the longs it's the same end game this is why i trade low uh, small caps guys it's the end game end game is the same okay the problem is the timing i don't know to short this thing at one dollar two dollars five dollars ten dollars but 
you know, when you short, you short when the death candle comes and you scale it. And that's what happens. The moment the top hit the death candle, I scaled every single pop because now I know the lines are set for me. I know where I can stop out. If you are shorting and guessing the top, you don't know where to short out, guys. You just randomly fucking stopping out. I mean, you don't know where to stop out. You short and you don't know where to stop out. That is the problem. You need to know where you going to take the loss, where you, where your risk are. And so the danger of cherry pick is you don't know where to take a loss. You're like 10 more cents. Oh shit, 20 more cents. Oh shit, it can't break four bucks. Oh fuck, it broke four bucks. It can't break 450. Oh shit, it's five. And max pain hits, I guarantee you. It will squeeze someone covered a shitload at five bucks. And that's the only re reason why it came down. These algos are calculating how many shares you have all this, dude. They're very fucking, they're good at what they do, dude. They see all the order flow. They, they know who's buying, who's selling. And so, at the, you know, it's fucking, they're doing this in a millisecond. You can't compete with this shit. The only way you compete is this. You wait for it. You wait for them to, to fucking do their thing, okay? I, I, I'm pretty sure if some motherfucker, if some guy covered a million shares, they're stuck at four bucks. This would not go to five bucks or a hundred thousand shares, whatever it may be. The fact that someone stepped on adding and adding, it, it did this. Cause I, I have so many experience on these things, dude. They, they, they basically run until they get a big short out. Cause they know the big short has to fucking cover. There's a supply and demand and all this stuff, dude. They, they're very smart. Okay. Don't think that if you fucking didn't cover at five bucks that they would fucking run this, that they would tank down. Someone covered a massive amount of shares at five bucks and they, they squeezed them out. They did the math and all this stuff. Okay. And so that's the same lesson. The same lesson is let the top form. I had FOMO. I mean, what can you say? And so training happens, man. Shit happens like that. Great guys. I'll see you guys back in the room. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.